One of the biggest stories of the Tudor period was Henry VIII's quest for a male heir, and this obsession to have a son led the king on a dark path of execution, imprisonment and slaughter. Anne Boleyn, the second wife of Henry, would lose her head inside the Tower of London, as the king got frustrated with the fact she did not give him a male heir, and the king's anger and temper was not to be incurred. However, Henry VIII did have a couple of other sons before his heir, Edward VI, was born, and during his first marriage to Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII did have a son born. But this child, Henry, tragically succumbed to illness around two months old inside of the royal nursery in Richmond Palace. However, the king had an illegitimate son who was given a huge amount of majesty and titles, and many inside of England believed that the king was preparing his illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy, to become his successor, and one day a king. But Fitzroy would have a rather short life and a tragic end. Henry Fitzroy was born in the June of 1519, and he was the son of the Tudor king Henry VIII and Elizabeth Bessie Blount. Bessie, his mother, was one of the ladies-in-waiting to Queen Catherine of Aragon, the first wife of Henry VIII. The king had an affair with Bessie during his first marriage, and this was a rather accepted thing, and Henry would throughout his reign hunt for mistresses and later future wives in the close circles of his own wives, but Henry Fitzroy was named after his father, and was given the name Fitzroy, meaning son of the king, which had in the past been used for illegitimate children. What is rather shocking, though, is that the child was conceived near to the time of Catherine of Aragon's confinement, meaning that whilst his wife was away preparing for the birth of his child, Henry VIII was sleeping around with her ladies and close friends. But Bessie Blount was considered a beautiful woman and also a skilled dancer, and she was regularly involved in the king's circle at court. But to avoid chaos during her pregnancy, she was sent to a priory to then give birth. But when Henry VIII found out that Bessie had given birth to his son, despite the boy being illegitimate and being born to a mistress, the king was delighted and he had the son he greatly wanted. He visited his child a number of times and he would acknowledge him as his son. But Bessie, to avoid any stress upon the queen, never returned to court. It must have been hard for the Queen, knowing her husband had slept with one of her ladies and close friends and that they had conceived a child, a son, who was greatly wanted by the royal court. Bessie Blount did something that Catherine could not, provide the King with his son. This would lead to Catherine's downfall eventually, and the King would look for another woman, and he would find this in the form of his second wife, Anne Boleyn. However, Henry had a very different plan for his illegitimate son, compared to other former kings who had children who were declared bastards. Henry organised for the son to be christened and Cardinal Wolsey watched on, and he was also named Henry Fitzroy's godfather. But Henry VIII then abandoned being discreet and he would bring his newborn son to court and would happily parade him in front of everyone. But he was proud of this child and Fitzroy was given a brilliant upbringing and was raised alongside his half-siblings and other royal children. He was part of the royal nursery and also attended court a number of times. Henry VIII continued to visit him and Fitzroy did have his own household and at the age of six he was made a Knight of the Garter by his family and he was also given the title the Duke of Richmond and Somerset and he was also declared the Earl of Nottingham. He received these titles in a huge ceremony and he was elevated to the peerage which was unheard of for an illegitimate child. And the six-year-old boy knelt in front of his father the king and this was the first time this had happened in around 400 years. The huge ceremony showed what plans Henry had for his son and many had believed that he may have been considering making Henry Fitzroy his successor and immediate heir. This would have disinherited Mary I and demoted her in the line of succession, but a few people would have argued this due to the boy's illegitimacy. The title of the Duke of Richmond had been held by Henry VII, Henry's father and Fitzroy's grandfather, and it shows how the king was trying to justify his lineage 
and also justify a claim to the throne that he had. Fitzroy was raised like a royal prince, and he was said to have been a most handsome, urban and learned young gentleman, very dear to the king on account of his good manners. He also looked very similar to his father, and Henry made him the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland in the June of 1529, and even considered making him the King of Ireland at one point. But the attention then shifted to who the young boy should marry. Henry VIII believed he should legitimise Fitzroy with marriage, and then strengthen his claims to the throne, and it was believed he could have married his half-sister, the future Mary I, or Princess Mary, as she was known, but this was then stopped by Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn. Henry even appealed to the Pope to see if he could marry two of his children together, and this was even agreed. But at the age of 14, Fitzroy married Mary Howard, the daughter of the third Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Howard, the uncle of Anne Boleyn. This was a way of legitimising the Boleyns and Howards also, but their marriage was never consummated. At this point, Fitzroy, in anyone's eyes, was clearly being prepared for kingship. He was given titles, a wife of high status, and was being given titles in the military. However, Fitzroy was even present when he saw Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn, being executed inside of the walls of the Tower of London. As Anne stood on the scaffold and made a speech, Fitzroy looked on before the swordsman took the head off of his stepmother in one swift blow. But he was a boy who was not the most well, and he would die early. If this didn't happen, it was very probable that he would have been named King Henry the Ninth. Fitzroy had been sick for some time before he died, and it's believed that he became ill with consumption, which today is called tuberculosis, and is of course very deadly and dangerous. In the Tudor period, this condition and disease killed many, and in his final months his public appearances were few and far between, but during these he did not seem too ill. On the 22nd of July 1536, inside of St James's Palace, Henry Fitzroy died, and he had been attended on by the royal doctors, who knew he was going to die. Some historians believed that there was more to his death than Fitzroy catching a deadly disease, some state that he died from the same condition that killed Henry VIII's brother, Prince Arthur Tudor, as the pair both suffered with the sweating sickness and coughing problems and issues with their lungs. Arthur also died at a young age, and he was the heir apparent, and some believed they had a genetic condition which was prominent in the Tudor royal lineage. Some historians have claimed that he may have caught the plague, which was spreading across England, and Fitzroy was buried rather quickly and this was often done to prevent spread of disease and to protect others. But lung problems were what was fatal for Henry Fitzroy. The king, when he was informed that his illegitimate son had died, was gutted and heartbroken, and he instructed the Duke of Norfolk to arrange the funeral. Norfolk had him buried in an ornate tomb inside of Framlingham Church, and he is still laid to rest here today, and is next to his wife who was buried there when she died later on. But the boy was only 17 when he died. His death could very easily have had a huge impact on history, and many have believed that the king was training Fitzroy for kingship, and it's hard to argue that he would not have been made successor. If Fitzroy would have lived, it's possible that the king would have remained on two wives, but his death, like the death of his uncle Arthur Tudor at a young age, had a profound effect on history. Thank you for watching and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.